Hi everyone and welcome back to my bench. When working on electronic projects, one of the biggest challenges is having the right voltages that you need for all of the different electronics because some modules work on 3.3 volts, some work on 5 volts and others work on 12 or even 24. So you need to have a way of providing that power to the required module. Here on the bench, I mostly use the Raiden RD6012 power supply, which I power from an additional power brick. Uh, providing 14 volts and that gives me the option to provide anything between 0 and 14 volts. I have other options for creating some higher voltages like this one USB step up that is currently being set to 24 volts and there's also a different set of uh, voltages that I can use using these adjustable power supply or even these small modules. Here on the bench I'm relatively well set but I currently have a problem whenever I want to do a project that requires different voltage inside my basement. I currently have another workshop down there where I do more projects that require any power tools or create dust or metal shavings. So in this video we're gonna create a power supply that will be for my basement workshop that we can use there and get all the common voltages. The typical way of getting all the different voltages is using a computer power supply. This one is rated for 750 watts and there are outputs for 3.35 plus and minus 12 volts as well as uh, 5 volts. And we can actually draw some decent current on each of the power rails. For example, on the 12 volt rail, we can draw up to 32 amps as well as um, on the second. And on the five volts, we can draw up to 24 amps. So this is a good choice for providing all the power that we need for any electronic project that we're going to do in the basement. However, the biggest drawback for this power supply is that we don't have nice terminals where we can connect things. We have the outputs that are standard for the PC connections and all the peripherals, but I managed to find a board that could solve all this. What I have here is a breakout for the 24 pins that go on the motherboard. It's the XHM229 board that has the connector to plug the 24 pin cable here. There is an on off switch that can trigger the power supply on the appropriate pin. There is also an LED to indicate that we have voltage and we have fused outputs for all of the voltages that are provided by the board. So we have minus and plus 12 volts. We have five volts and 3.3 volts as well as grounds for each of the connections. Now, what I don't like about the board is the style of pins that they have here. If we compare it to the Raiden power supply, we have a banana plug style connectors and I've made a bunch of cables that can connect to that directly by just plugging into the appropriate output. However, here we only have a screw type terminal, so there is no hole that we can plug into and we need to sandwich the wire directly in the pin. I don't like that, so I've bought myself some replacement pins that I'm gonna change here on the board and we need to figure out an enclosure that we can add this and the power supply, so everything is housed as one unit. Additional to the standard voltages that we get from the power supply, I'm gonna also include the switch in DC power supply. This is actually a buck boost converter, so depending on the input, we can go either up or down in the output and it's all adjustable. So for any voltage that's outside the standard 3.3, 5 and 12 volts, we can provided with this if we ever need to. To house everything together, I decided to 3D print an enclosure that I was able to find online. And this is the model that I was able to find uh, using a bench power supply, as well as the SK35 module and the same breakout board that I have. This one seems to be for a slightly different power supply than mine. So I modified it slightly and reduced the length of the support pieces to fit the size of the power supply I have, but everything else seems to be fitting okay and I'm gonna house everything inside. Beside the slight change in length of the pillars that hold everything together, I also did not print the front cover for the breakout board because I honestly really like how that looks. And I also printed everything in PETG instead of PLA. And if you ever need to 
print any of your own parts, then you can check out today's sponsor, which is PCBWay, and they are awesome 3D printing service. Looking for a fast, reliable 3D printing for your prototypes or custom parts? PCBWay offers more than just top tier 3D printing. They are your complete solution for advanced manufacturing. Using industrial grade 3D printers, PCBWay delivers FDM, SLA, SLS, and metal 3D printing options, giving you the ideal mix of strength, detail, and speed. But they don't stop there. They also specialize in CSC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and full PCB production and assembly, all in one place. No need to coordinate with multiple vendors. PCBWay brings you consistent quality, great prices, and quick turnaround, whether you're building a one-off prototype or scaling up to full production. Their online quoting tool makes ordering simple, where you just upload your file and get a quote instantly. From aerospace to healthcare, innovators trust PCBWay to turn ideas into reality. Head to PCBWay.com today and discover how smooth manufacturing can be. Now to start the building process, we'll first need to open up the power supply and remove some of the excess wires that we don't need here. The plan is that we're going to leave the 24 pins as is because we need to connect that to the breakout board. We're going to use this 4 pin connector with 2 plus 12 volts and 2 grounds to connect to the switching module so that is being powered from this and can provide some current on the front of the case there is also a place for one of these connectors that we can stick from the button and i'm gonna leave one of them and cut off all the rest and there is an additional cable that we'll just completely need to remove from the board because we'll no longer need it before doing any work on any power supply, you need to make sure that it's unplugged and it's not referenced to live. And also you need to be careful with these capacitors right here because they can hold quite some charge even if this power supply has been turned off for a while. So always be careful and do this on your own risk. I'm gonna start first by clipping the wire clip that holds everything together and also I'm going to release the wires from this holding clip on the end so I can properly trace and find which wires I need to cut off. I'm going to cut them as close as possible to the board so they don't present any risk for shorting out. So this is one of the plugs that I'm going to remove and this is the first wire that I'm going to cut. Okay, so plug number one is out. We have these two and this one we said we're gonna actually reuse. So I'm gonna just cut the one from here. Making sure that I don't cut the right, the wrong one. And that is also out and now we have just the connector with the four wires. I'm gonna try to clip this one in a bit closer on the inside. As well as this one. And we can now start building the power supply. For the adjustable power supply, we need to screw in the wires and we can't really use this connector. So I'm gonna chop it off and strip the wires and I'm gonna actually connect these two together. I used a bit of solder to secure them together and be able to securely screw them here on the terminals and I'm gonna cut the excess, so those are ready. Now let's start putting the enclosure together. For the back side, there are two pieces that align with the mounting holes here on the back. So we're gonna add them to it with the wrong screws because these are the only ones that I have that are long enough that would fit in the hole, but they should do.
Now for the front, I'm gonna start by first removing the existing terminals that are on the board and replacing them with the, the other terminals that I bought. But unfortunately, I won't be able to do that because I just realized that the ones I'm taking off are M2 and they have slightly smaller holes, but the ones that I'm trying to install are M3 and they don't really fit in the hole. So this will need to be a job for later because these are the only ones that I could source locally. So I need to order online and wait for a few weeks before they arrive. I could also use a drill to drill through the holes, but they're true plated and I don't want to damage them. So I'll wait a bit. The front holder piece is a nice, friction fit so we need to press it in and there are holes in the back to account for the screws that we have so that's a nice nice thought and there are four holes that align with the front piece of the PCU that we need to find some matching screws and connect the two pieces okay so that is now in let's start connecting the power supply the power jack goes in like so and it clips here on the front also for this connector we need to push it from the back and actually there is a slot where this goes in and clips in the banana plugs come with these connectors on them so I'm gonna solder just a piece of wire to them to be able to then connect it to the module here. For mounting, I'm gonna use the same orientation. So the voltage is on the left while the ground is on the right let's add the washer okay that's a bit tricky for some fat fingers And we can now mount this on top of here. This was probably better done beforehand. Okay. And we need to pass the wire that's gonna connect to the power supply from here. Let's try to release it so it doesn't hold the rest okay so these two are the VN plus and the VN minus and we have out plus and out minus Now to secure it, this should just press in, which it does. Let's now connect the back of the power supply. This will just screw in directly in the plastic. And the last step is to align the two pieces and secure it from the front while keeping the cables in the gap that we have available.
and here is now the final piece everything comes really neatly in its place all of the ports on the power supply are accessible we have all of the voltages accessible here on the front plus the variable input now let's see if everything works and let's connect this to the main supply when connected everything should stay off and if we flip the switch on the front the power supply turns on and we can see the LED as well as the output that we have here on the front and let's try and test some of the voltages I have the meter here in 20 volts so let's try first and see the minus 12 so it's minus 11.5 let's see this is the 12 volt if I get it to connect so 12.65 5.19 on the 5 volts and 3.3 on the 3 volts here on the top I've set the meter to 15.4 and if I measure currently it's off if I turn it on then we get 15.05 let's let me bring you closer you can see here on the input to set it up you need to bring it to this step at the beginning so now the output is off and we can control it easily from here to change the voltage we need to press and hold and we're gonna get this voltage here lit up if we press shortly we're gonna get control over what digit we want to control so let's say 9 volts if we press and hold then we switch to the current setting again basically setting up each digit and let's say we want to do 100 milliamps we can hold that and now if we turn it on and measure we should get different voltage which we do and so it's 904 905 it varies a bit but it it's doing its job now in the original model there was also a cover for this front piece and an extension for the power switch but I really do like how the board looks it gives a bit of scientific uh, look and it will definitely kick off some questions if anyone sees it in my workshop I think this is a great addition and it's easily accessible we have uh, accessible all the voltages when I get the proper banana plugs I'll replace them from the originals because I can then use my standard cables that I already have to power it off it's easy as flicking a switch and everything is now off and it can be stored without drawing any current same as if the power supply is connected to a computer and with that, I'm going to end the video right here. I hope that you liked the build and I want to thank PCBWay once again for sponsoring this video. Make sure to check them out for any 3D printed parts. If you like the video and you like the build, make sure to subscribe so you can also see my future builds. Make sure to share the video with someone that needs a power supply in their workshop. YouTube thinks that you're going to also like this video and I'm going to see you all in the next one. Cheers.